Today we'll go over how you can have pixel perfect collision in your tile map game. And so when I move my player here along the wall, you can see that it doesn't go through it and it collides perfectly. And also if I try and get these corner pieces, I'm able to fit in perfectly. And not along that, I can also get through these one by one gaps very easily and nicely without having any clipping issues. We'll be using Odin and Raylib together to create this, uh, but I've made the code as really pseudo code as possible and I'll explain it detail as possible just so you can import it into any language you like without having any issues and I just have three files really uh, the main one is actually just the collision.odin which is where all our, coll our collision physics is happening uh, but I'll show the rest I just have that obviously my main file I have a grid space and I'm using enum to just to determine the tile texture in this case uh, and I also going through and loop through it and within the tile map it's just some code that allows this our map image to render all smoothly and correctly. The main thing to know is that within our main game loop, we have this player.move. This is where our collision is take, taking place and that these are all in the package main. So that means that they can all read the variables from each other. First, I have this structure or dictionary here in Python for the player information. That's just its speed and its position. So it's X, Y and it's a 32, F32. So it's a 2D vector. And then we have a default position already set. So this is a global variable that all the files can be read, which is just starting at one by one and its speed is set to 200. Other important information is that we have a cell size, which is 64 by 64 pixels. So that's how big a tile is. And that's also going to be how big our player is. So the player is matching our tile size at the moment. The player moving is very easy for now. It's just simply just checking what direction the player moves. And then we just times that we add that with the current position times of the speed and we're also doing, doing delta time just so it makes it obviously very accurate to the frame rate and not that if the player has a high frame rate they move faster as compared to someone who has a slow frame rate where they will move much slower and we have four different codes to look at four different types of method of collision one the top one is the best one and the bottom one is the most simplest and naive one so let's start with the simplest and naive approach so what is the naive approach? Well, it's really simple. As you can see, this is all it is in one line of code. This is a bit of code, so a very small chunk and pretty fast as well because not many calculations are taking place. And all it is is that we get the player rectangle. I'm using Raylib's rectangle, but if you don't know, if you're using not Raylib and you don't know, then this MDM web docs has a perfect guide on how you can do rectangle collision. It tells you what the info you need, so the rect x, the the two rectangles x and y and width and height position that's really it the you can see it's very simple to do not too difficult and i'll have that in the description but this rectangle that we have is a new position it's position it's going to be in and we want to check all its neighboring tiles that's all eight tiles it's the corner pieces the top pieces the bottom pieces just to ensure that we're not touching perhaps anything below it or around it uh you could just check in front or just the position you're looking at, but you may have some inaccuracies. You may collide into wall because if you're not checking that corner piece, uh, but you're moving in that corner piece, you're moving diagonally, you're going to collide through it. And we just want to have a boolean to check if we are going to collide so we can determine whether we are going to set the new position or not. And uh, this half size is the cell size. So that's just the, the player's center position. So there currently is. So what we want to do is loop through the directions and we want to get the our map position of both our x and y coordinates so we do the the current the new players and then we do the half size because the player is is its x and y position is it's it's, it's or whatever its origin is in this case it's inside the cube or the rectangle in this case and because our rectangle is 64 by 64 meaning that the position is going to be 32 by 32 we just want to add that back on to our position and then we divide it by the cell size uh, and the reason we do that is so we can get, we are going it back to our relative coordinate position. So one by one on the grid would actually be 64 by 64 because that's how big it is. And so we're doing it like relative to the actual world space to the tile map space. And we just want some checks. So we want to check if the position X, position Y are within our tile map zone. Otherwise our game will crash or say it was looking into an array that was out of bounds. And then lastly, we just want to check if the actual grid, so this is our tile map, is in fact a wall, which is just our enum. So if we go back to our main, this could in fact be zeros or ones. It depends whatever you want to collide. It could in fact be like a dictionary and you have different tile maps 
and if you check that you just check if that tile is collidable so depends on how you would like to do it and with that we then just create our rectangle for our wall and then we just check i'm just using radibs bit collision checks but like i said use that mdm docs that will tell you how you can do collision between two rectangles and it'll just return the boolean value where you did and so if it did collide it, then we just set the now that boolean value to true and we break it that means we don't we no longer need to loop because we know we've collided with the player so we can save some resources as well instead of just keep checking all directions and then we just say yeah if it didn't collide like it's set originally then we can set the new player's position if not we don't we don't set the player's new position and so when we run it now with the denied collision as you can see it does work and we apply it. but because we are just checking our last position it means we will not be able to get fit through these gaps as you can see and this is because you can see the slight gap that we get here is that we're not moving the player to the edge of the wall because uh, we're just reverting to position so a player that moves very fast is going to seem it's just not going to stick to the wall they're going to appear like that because they are moving much they're like sort of jumping and if the player actually goes fast enough they can actually jump on the other side of the wall so they could appear on this side if they're going fast this would be an issue with something like a bullet physics where bullets are traveling very fast and the wall is very thin that the collision does not occur because the new position has actually just gone straight over it so our next stage is to well position a player to be next to the wall and this is also quite simple we just need to get the wall width and the player's like width as well so the code for going next to all is actually majority of it is the same we're still looping through we're still just checking the position and we're still colliding with the same way but now we just want to check which direction the player is moving so if the x is greater than zero that means they're moving right and if they're not then they're going to be moving left and it will same with the y and all we are doing is now when if they have collided we then get the wall at walls x position so it's width position i guess and then we just take away with the player current width if they are moving the right and then we do the opposite with the left essentially we're saying we get the, the new it's a spelling mistake new x the new x equals the wall dot x plus and then we add on to the width and then for the y we do the same as well we just check we just do it for the height instead it's the exact same thing and then we break it as well and this time we don't need the boolean value for tech checking if we collide because we just set it we're always setting a new x and y value so we just return that value or in this case set it to the player's position so when it comes to running it we now see that we are nice and close to the wall if i move we can actually fit through these one by one slots but however there is a big flaw in this design if i move at an angle i jump it's because we are both we're checking both the y and x at the same time and because both y x and y we're moving is that it's setting it to our width I mean, we're actually rapidly sliding across the wall very quickly in fact you can see here that, that i'm jumping to the end and if i was to do it the opposite way and you can see that i can actually go through walls because i'm traveling so fast uh, and it can cause all sorts of issues so to fix that issue we then want to rather than check both the x and y at the same time so you can see we're checking both the new and x positions that means if the person is moving directly both of these are going to detect and both of them are going to update their position previously causing that sliding effect and so what we should do is just do it separately so we want to check the x first and then we want to check the y and then we return each position this results in us no longer sliding like that and that means that the positions are sort of moving independently so if the person is moving diagonally and the let's say the y collides but the x is not colliding the x will continue going that direction while the y the position that won't be updated and so in this case we are change our neighboring tiles so in this case we're just checking in the direction checking so the top three let's say if i was moving up i was moving i only check the top three tiles that i'm corresponding so the two corner and the one straight ahead and if i was moving in the x and the right hand sides i'd be checking the next three on that side and if it was diagonal i then check one then the other but more or less the code is the same so we can see we get the tile map scores but rather than passing that position we're just doing plus one because we're checking the neighboring tile and when we do loop through the directions we're only doing it for the y piece in this case and that's because we want to check the corner tiles as well and it is essentially the same but this time and but we're obviously setting the players the wall x and then the players width as well the same as before we do the out sif and again you can see here this time we're doing a negative one because we're checking the other side and 
when we do the Y, we can see we're actually setting a new rectangle position. One is it's, it was previously the X current position to the player's current position, and then the new Y position. And if we go back up as well, we see that we're doing it this one. We set the new X, but the Y position is what it, the player currently is. We're checking them independently. And you see, it's just the same this time we're reversing it. And more or less the code is pretty much the same, just those changes. We're now just checking the direction before we do the actual loop of the positions. So when I now run this and check, we see that I can now move nicely and I'm able to fit through this. And if I'm going diagonally, like we see here, I'm now just sliding, but sliding correctly. I'm sliding along the wall. I'm not just jumping the positions and causing all issues. And we can see I'm able to just slide in and have no issues and it's nice and responsive. Uh, there is one further optional step you could take, and this is for stuff that move very fast. And I talked about that if you go so fast that the new position will in fact be could go to the point where it skips the wall. The collision doesn't check because the new position, the players move so fast that it's just jumped straight over the wall, known as tunneling. And so in it, the, there's an easy way to do this, which is to add steps. So we divide the new position by steps. So we go check it, like let's say by five, and that's what we have here. So we have the number of steps, it can be whatever you want. In this case, I have it as five, and we just divide new positions into steps. So we're sort of like checking five different intervals. And in fact, the code is more or less signed, but now we have them wrapped in a loop of the number of steps. So the, the sort of, I guess, disadvantage to this is that you're doing more operations. You're looping through more times, as in the previous one where we, we don't loop through, we only loop through the positions. This time we've got to loop through each number of steps, which is, not actually very performance energy you know, five extra loops is not much uh we do have to do it for both uh but if you have a lot of entities all doing this at the same time uh there's obviously that might be a lot that might be a few issues and that's really all we're doing is that we're just incrementing each position so for each step we increment it to the current position that we have set up at top so the current position is the cur player's current position but we're going to add on and increment it and then create a new rectangle each time until the player either collides or just doesn't collide so the loop ends so if i do it with the new position i mean it's going to look exactly the same as before you see we just slide through it's not going to look any difference but actually what we're doing is we're checking it in incremental steps so if the player was obviously fast they wouldn't jump through while you can fit in one by one gaps it is important to note that if you have it perfectly aligned like this then two in parallel and not having one longer than the other you'll find that it's going to be Pretty much impossible to fit through this gap because pixel perfect so you need your character moving by a pixel so i'd recommend either having your character smaller than the tile map size so that could be just slightly more at least the hitbox should be slightly smaller or you don't have one by one gaps of course or that you have some sort of like leeway like a forgiveness that if there is just in this way that the player can move through but i think the best approach is either just make the character smaller or i'll make the collision slightly smaller as well so as an example, I've just changed it so the player character is smaller and that just makes it mean I can fit through these one by one gaps. It'll be easy at seen here like that. If you want a bit more of a detailed tutorial or just a written version, and I'll link this tutorial in the description below for you to look at. And this just has nice gifts and a really nice explanation, including how you can check to kind of a cube or different rectangle shapes. And if you're looking to generate some textures or convert images into textures, I have a perfect tool for you and a perfect video that will just appear on your screen. So click and watch that and also subscribe to my channel as well for more tutorials and game dev and program related videos. I'll see you in the next one.